Hey everybody, Norm from Test It here. I want you to meet Josh, who we found on the internet through a viral video, because this is being spread around. You made and designed your own boat. Mini boat. Mini boat. Yeah. It's the smallest boat I've ever seen. It's almost like the size of a go-kart. It's pretty small. Yeah, and we're in your workshop workspace where you designed and built this and manufactured it. Uh, tell me about this boat and how this came about. All right, so it's six feet in length. It, that's actually surprisingly not the smallest. Someone else crossed the ocean in a five and a half foot length one, but by volume, this might actually be smaller. So I was inspired by the stitch and glue technique that is seen commonly in kayaks. And a friend of mine had purchased one of those kayaks and stitched it all together with, uh, they use copper wire and then epoxy and it holds its form. And so when I saw that new technique, I was like, oh, I could build a boat without having to make jigs or use screws or like set things up. It was just, just all goes together perfectly. Explain to me this the, the stitch and glue technique. So basically you've got flat panels and you create the form by just stitching the panels together and you stitch them just all along the corners and it just takes the form as you start to stitch it. And then once you've got it all stitched together, you take epoxy and you run fillets along the, you thicken it with a wood flour and you run fillets all along the insides. And then once that cures, you can snap off all your zip ties that you use to stitch the thing together and you can start finishing the boat. That's insane because like you said, this started off as flat sheets. Yeah. Uh, we've built model boats before and you have your plywood and you have to heat your plywood or wet it and put it around, like you said, a jig to get that curve. And glue each piece. And glue each piece yeah. together. You don't use a jig. There's no f metal frame or anything. You put the pieces around. You're literally just zip tying them together. Yeah, totally. Like I said, when I saw the technique, I was like, oh, I've got to build a boat. And I'm looking at the side of this, and this isn't even one piece. It looks like there are three pieces here, and yet it looks like one continuous curve. Yeah, so there's, uh, there's two reasons for doing that. One is that this happens to be the exact size of my laser cutter cut zone. And two, they're a heck of a lot easier to ship and cheaper to ship if you can just fit them all within a two foot by three foot box. Wow, so literally stacks of uh, quarter inch ply. Yeah, it's quarter inch ply, um, marine grade, which is substantially more expensive than non-marine grade. But if you're going to put the time into building a boat, I think it's worth buying the good stuff. Now, have you ever designed a boat before? No. Okay. <laughs> I actually designed the entire thing in CAD before I even uh, cut anything. And I built a scale model as well to test float it in my friend's jacuzzi. So that was my next question. How yeah. did you know it was going to float? <laughs> well, so you, you do estimations in CAD. You know where your center of gravity is and you know where your center of buoyancy is. And you know your buoyancy because you can apply water properties to the hull um, in CAD. And so you get a, a really good understanding in CAD, but then you really want to get a feel for it. So you build the scale model. And it was funny, I built a half scale model it's like this big. It's still pretty and big. I, yeah, yeah. And so I, I, I took it to my friends and I was like, look, it's a half scale. And they're like, that's only half scale? <laughs> they were expecting it much bigger. But uh, I loaded it up with weights to simulate the, uh, the center of gravity of the vessel. And I placed it in my friend's hot tub. And it turns out hot tubs are pretty awesome for doing testing because you can turn the jets on. Right. And now you've got your turbulent water. Yeah. And uh, I just made some minor changes between making the uh, scale model and building the full scale model. And then assembly, like you said, you, uh, you have your zip ties, you epoxy it together, mm -hmm. and then to actually get it waterproof and, and buoyant, I mean, I assume there's a bulkhead space between here. Yeah, yeah, so there's a, we've got about, I'd say six inches of uh, what would normally be empty space, but you end up filling it with uh, some closed cell foam. Mm. Okay. And that provides emergency buoyancy when the thing gets flooded. So it's uh, basically unsinkable. It can still capsize, but it's not going to end up at the bottom of the ocean. Right, assuming right. Assuming the bulkheads do their job. And we've tested them. And we also know from CAD that they provide about a 210 pounds of buoyancy. All right. So that's pretty, that's pretty good. It's a yeah. good normal sized person. It's enough buoyancy to keep the boat level in the water, fully flooded with somebody in it. Wow, and then the coating on the outside, make sure that this doesn't wear as you're on, on, in a lake or in the water. Yeah, exactly. So the outside here, we've got, um, the outside we've got fiberglass and you mm -hmm. wet it out with epoxy and it turns totally clear. 
and you can actually see the texture of the fiberglass if you get real close and at certain angles. And then you just throw a few more coats of epoxy on there, sanding between each coat. And then for your final coats, you end up doing varnish because epoxy has to be protected from UV rays. Right. Wow. And it's, it's a beautiful finish right now. So you've taken this out in the water and you've actually been able to drive it around. So tell me about that drive system. Uh, see, there you have a motor oh, yeah. here. So, so it's all propelled by just a basic uh, trolling motor. A lot of the uh, boater guys are already familiar with these. They use them for fishing. Um, it's run off of a 12 volt battery. And this is an outboard motor, so it just clamps onto the back here. Mm -hmm. And then you run your power cable through a connector. Wow, okay. And then you'll place your batteries right back here. And you connect them with the alligator clips. And then you've got, uh, you've got your drivetrain all set up. And, and then what then about steering? For steering, it's old school go-kart steering. <laughs> so these two ropes will wrap around this drum and then they're attached with these little quick cleat connectors. And then you basically spin the wheel one way and then the shaft pulls, go ahead and spin it. Wow. Yeah, it takes about three rotations to get uh, clock yeah. to clock. That is so analog. Yeah. <laughs> so great. <laughs> and it's amazing how effective it is. It's like so simple. Yeah, you know, other than the motor and maybe some of the hardware uh, in, in like the, something like the seat, uh, this is something that you manufactured here. Yeah. Like so all the pieces I, I'm seeing. All the custom components parts. are either 3D printed or laser cut. And the 3D printer components, you could probably whittle something out of wood if you wanted to, but it's just sometimes you get some complex curves going on. We've got a compound curve surface here. And so it's easy in CAD to just extrude a shape from that. Sure. And then all of a sudden you've got your, uh, your nice little slick looking bearing mount and it can 3D print in a few hours. And then there's a few other 3D printed components like right here, this motor shaft uh, connected to the steering drum. This piece is all 3D printed just because it's simpler to 3D print something of this uh, shape and size than it is to try to laser cut a solution. And when then, you design, do you think in those terms, in terms that you know you're going to manufacture? Yeah, pretty much every part of the design, it's like, okay, is this going to be a laser cut piece or a 3D printed piece? Because they complement each other, you know? Laser cutting is great for large, flat pieces, and 3D printing is great for small, three-dimensional, organic-shaped pieces. And that allows you to replicate this because you've designed it once and you can build it as many times as you want or yeah. even let other people build it because now you're offering a kit for people exactly. to put it together. So they could either purchase plans and the plans I offer digital files as well as uh, printable files. And so if they have access to a laser cutter or if, they have, or if they're international, they can take it to their own laser cutter mm -hmm. and build locally or they could pay me and I could offer them the kit and then I can laser cut all the components and 3D print all the components and then ship it to them. And it's a, it's a bare hull kit. So it mean, that means it comes with pretty much everything custom would be included in the kit. And then you'd have to go and purchase the off the shelf components like the seat and the motor and the, uh, and the gauges and all the other stuff like ropes. Um, but you can just order that online. Those are yeah, all it's all in the bill of materials and you can go ahead and check that out. That's uh, all posted for free on my website, along with the instructions, actually. You can, you can see how to build the entire thing uh, if you just visit the website and there's a link to the Instructables. Well, I know they're made to order and we came at the right time because you had just finished putting a kit together. Can we check that out? Yeah, definitely. I've yeah. got the complete kit right here. Oh, very cool. And like you said, it's just flat sheets. It's just a, a lot of ply. plywood. Uh, well, it's actually, I think it's a lot, but as far as boat building is concerned, it's very little plywood. It's three full sheets of quarter inch marine grade plywood. What is marine grade ply versus Oh man, ply this you debate get is just like, it's all over the internet. So you either go marine grade, which is quite expensive, or you go cheap and you risk it. So there's a lot of things about marine grade that I think make it worth the purchase. So first of all, you're going to spend a lot of time building your boat. Mm -hmm. So you might as well build it with the best components if you want it to last. Sure. Right? So marine grade ensures that there's, there's, uh, there's basically no knots in the boat. There's no voids between each layer of plywood, which could be problematic as you're bending the plywood. Ah, okay. If there's a void, it could crack. Yep. 
Um, it also is less likely to, uh, I think the term is flake. So as the, as the wood gets wet, it's not going like, to delaminate along the grain like a, like a typical underlayment wood. Um, and then uh, it's also uniform, more uniform colors between sheets. Hmm. So you end up with, uh, yeah, just an overall nicer look. That's very cool. And I can see even here, one, this is li like a puzzle, literally, yeah. how the pieces connect. And also these holes are exactly. where you have your zip ties. Wow. So this yeah. hole would connect to a piece like at a, at a right angle and you would zip tie it, pull it taut. Exactly. And then put epoxy on it. So because of the limitations of the laser and also for ease of shipping, you end up needing ultimately about six and a half foot lengths that curve in and create the six foot boat length. And so to get that, you end up doing this puzzle joint technique. And here's a little sample of it, a little test fit. And when you get enough of these puzzle joints all lined up, you actually don't even need clamps. You just run epoxy along the uh, lip of these puzzle joints and you stomp on it. And it's such a tight fit that you can just leave it at that point. And then it cures and it's as good as a large sheet of plywood. <laughs> That's amazing. What, what else have you learned about boats through the process of building a boat and the manufacture of a boat? Oh yeah. So. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things that I learned <laughs> along the way. Um, first of all, I had to learn about center of buoyancy and center of gravity and the role that they play as far as stability of the boat is concerned. This boat is actually designed such that it has a uh, very low primary stability. So it feels kind of tipsy when you're in it, but very good secondary stability. So it's really hard to actually flip it. Mm. And so I think that's a good combination for such a small boat because it allows you to have fun with the boat. You get to lean it into a turn, you know? And uh, you get to lean it with, without the fear, once you're comfortable with the boat, without the fear of actually dumping it and flipping it. And if you did manage to dump it and flip it, that's when I also learned about uh, a buoyancy, uh, emergency buoyancy. So you've got the bulkheads and filled with the foam. foam. Yeah. Exactly. So you don't have to worry about dumping your uh, treasured boat at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> or the, the bottom of a, the local lake. Yeah, that's yeah, more like it. That's more like it. <laughs> uh, well, this is amazing. And thank you for having us here in your workshop. I see your lasers, see your 3D printers. You're designing and building and fabricating. It's just something you came up with one day. You saw the kayak and said, I'm going to build a boat. I saw the kayak. I knew that many boats existed. I'd seen some before, so I was pretty inspired by that. I believe uh, Paul Elkins is the first guy that I'm aware of that built a mini boat. His was six feet, so I beat him by two feet. I got I got a six foot. I beat you, Paul. <laughs> and I one more question for you. Can we take your boat out into the water? Definitely. All right. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Yeah. I feel like the penguin in Batman Returns when he's driving the tiny Batmobile. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. To see! Josh, that was incredible. Stoked you enjoyed it? I, I can't, I bet everyone who gets in one of these and gets off has a smile on their face. Definitely. You definitely. can't help it because it, it's so much fun. Yeah, and there's like so few of them in existence. I'm stoked you got to experience it. You might not ever get to experience it again unless you 
build your own. That's what we're thinking about right <laughs> now. Uh, <laughs> one thing I want to relay is that it was, the handling was so smooth. Yeah, uh, the way you've designed it. it was just... Initially, it's pretty unstable, but the, 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 that's the primary stability. The secondary stability is pretty darn good. It takes a lot of effort to actually flip one of these things. And I was trying to do these hard turns, and it just wasn't flipping over. Like, yeah. the water wasn't coming on board. <laughs> yep. So that's a testament to your design um, and, and the Mostly design, also a little bit of luck. <laughs> so. And a good build quality. This is amazing. Who knew that you could laser cut and 3D print your way into having a boat? Uh, I also want to thank your buddy Dylan out there for volunteering his boat. Thanks, Dylan! <laughs> so our team could have their rides. Um, and I know you sell plans and kits on your website, rapidwhale.com. Yep, rapidwhale.com. Awesome. Keep on making weird stuff. Thanks. And awesome <laughs> stuff. It's a pleasure to meet you. You too, Norm. This is so cool.